Hey, Yoakum, this, uh, hope you're doing well. Um, just wondering, you know, when you came into the series with Carolina, uh, how you were sort of looking at, you know, ways you could beat them and how you think that you ended up doing that. What was some of the keys to beating them for you and how you'll use that going forward? Well, I think uh, we knew that they were going to play with a lot of speed, so we wanted to uh, match that, that speed and play with a lot of intensity, uh, be efficient, breaking out of our end, getting through the neutral zone and uh, try to work him, work him down low on their end. Uh, you know, I thought we did a really good job exposing them a little bit defensively. And uh, I think as the series went on, we, uh, we, uh, we took over more and more and, and uh, you know, it ended up being, uh, being a successful uh, uh, strategy for us. We'll go to Stephen Conroy. Hey, Daniel, uh, I know you probably didn't expect to be the, the next guy in line here, which, which it appears you are right now. Um, what, what's that feeling like? And, and also, uh, you, you appear to uh, turn a corner this year down in Providence and, and what was working well for you down there? So, um, obviously, the season went pretty well. Obviously, no one knew about the pandemic, so we were kind of sad it ended up how we ended up. But right now I'm here, and obviously someone told me like a week ago or 10 days ago that uh, this would happen. I wouldn't believe it, but obviously everybody on this team respects uh, Tuka's decision. And uh, right now I'm just trying to work hard every single day. And then if my shot comes, I'm just going to do my best to uh, get a chance um, and help the team to win. We'll go to Matt Voter. Dan, where were you when you found out about Tuca and what was your reaction? Not not to what not to his decision, but to what that meant for you. I was just uh, I just got up and I just went for breakfast, so I was a little bit sleepy. And uh, the, the Dan Dan Sweeney just told me, "Hey, you are backing up." So it was it was simple as that, and uh, it, it happened so quick. So uh, uh, yeah, so that was that was quick, and my reaction was like, "Okay, fine, like I'm backing up." What time is the bus leaving? It's in 45 minutes. Okay, I'll be there. <laughs> we'll go to Scott McLaughlin. Hey, Dan. Uh, kind of along those lines, how are you approaching things before that? You know, when it was you and Max maybe more battling for number three because there's a clear top two. Were you still approaching it as though, you know, you could step in and be on the bench for a game at any point? I mean, uh, it was just uh, just a coach's decision, and I think in my mind and uh, Maxi's relationship has been uh, it's been awesome. Same with like Tuka and Yaro here. Like we are all we are like a small group here, and uh, so our relationship has been great. So I mean, it's it's just what it is. Like I, I at this point, like I don't think that no one cares who is in. Everybody who is in, you want him to do good, and you want to help the team to to win and uh, accomplish our goal. We'll go to Kevin DuPont. Get it right this time? Got it. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Joachim, I'm just curious um, whether, your, whether your line has a Corrali in the middle or Parr in the, in the middle, how, do, how does that vary reads or your role or, 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 or does it not change things at all? Um, I don't think it changed much. Uh, we, uh, we know how or what way we need to play to be planned, to be efficient and successful. And I don't think that's going to change whether it's uh, Lindy or Sean or it's me or Wax or who's playing. I think uh, we all, we've been on the same page and, and, uh, and, and we've been, you know, getting to our game and, and, and kind of found a way to be successful. And that's, that's just how we're going to keep playing. It doesn't matter who's, who's in or out. Go to Joe Haggerty. Hey, Joe Kim, I know all season long, you know, every regular season shot blocking is important to you, but how much more important is it to you once you get to the playoffs and how big a part of your game and what you feel like you bring to the table is it uh, during the playoffs and the penalty kill and or an even strength? Yeah, I mean, it's regular season or playoffs. It's always important. I think in playoffs, though, you – you know, every every play is super important. You know, it could uh, could be a game game decisive uh, decision or a block, or you know, just getting a puck out of out of your own end. And, and you know, first shift that might be uh, 
deciding the, you know, the outcome of the game. So I, you know, that's what I like so much about playoffs too. It's like every play is super important. So, uh, yeah, it's fun. It's a, uh, it's a little bit different game playoffs, I think. We'll go to Mike Loftus. Hi, Dan. Um, so it's, it's been like five months, I guess, since you played in an actual game. Um, and, and I think you were kind of aware that that was going to happen when you, when you came up to, to Warrior um, last month. Do you, do you practice any differently um, at all? Do you do anything differently with, with your coach or, you know, away from the rink, um, you know, during such a big gap between the game, you know, to stay ready? Uh, I mean, obviously, it's not a, a scenario for, for every goalie when he's not playing for five months and then he's um, on a bench. But I think I did everything I could to, to get as, as much prepared as I, as I, as I am. And uh, if I'm going to get the shot, I'm just, as I, as I told, told before, I'm just going to, I'm just going to do, do my best. And uh, yeah, it's just simply as that, like, I'm just not trying to overthink things. Like I still know that like, even though I haven't played for five months, I still, still know how to stop the puck. So uh, that, that's it for me. So like, right, there is nothing really I can do. Obviously I'm watching like a lot of games going on here. I'm still trying to learn. Yaro has been awesome to me. Like he's talking talking to me a lot, goalie buff, Maxi too. So I'm just uh, I'm just trying to not overthink it, and uh, I'm just confident in myself that I did everything I, I I I could to 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 be ready. Go to Matt Voter. Dan, did the game that Tuka missed during the round robin was that helpful to you to realize how how close you really were to being to being a contributor in in this that that if somebody could have a cough in the morning that you could be on you could be on the ice that later that night i mean that's that's just what it is for a third goalie right like it, there's the same same thing for for guys that are taking warm ups like you never know you always have to be ready like there is not there is no no days off basically for you because like you always got to think that you are playing even if you are sitting in a stance that's just uh it's just like a part of our job. So I wouldn't say it helped, but obviously you are still like, you're always super close, but at the same time you're so far. So so I'm just uh, trying to be focused every single day and um, just um, just try my best every day. We'll go to Kevin DuPont. Dan, I don't know if you got to know uh, Anton Hudobin very much in, in the as your years overlapped. But he's won three in a row now in Dallas. It's taken him, I think, 14 or 16 years to get his first playoff action. What do you, what, I assume you're happy for him. And what, what do you think of it taking that long to get that chance? Uh, so I'm just going to say a simple answer. It's just uh, that's the beauty of the hockey. Like, you never know when's the first or, or last shot's going to come. So I feel like you just got to enjoy every, every moment. Every time you step on the ice, it's a gift. So, so uh, obviously, I'm super, super happy for him. But at the same time, I want uh, Yaro to do the same thing. Won three in a row. And so. Our last question will be from Mike Loftus. Dan, I forgot to ask you earlier. Did you get to do anything fun for your birthday yesterday? <laughs> I mean, I got Whitney. Whitney got me some cupcakes. So they were in our players' line. So me and all the guys, we went there and we had some cupcake. But my my sister is a wedding today, so I'm just uh, once we are once we are done here, I'm just gonna Facetime then. Uh, so it's gonna be my birthday and uh, the biggest gift you guys gave me on on Wednesdays that we made it to the second round. So I had a pretty cool pretty cool birthday. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you very much, Dan. Thank you very much, Joachim. That'll end our Bruins media availability. Thanks for joining us and have a great day.